Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. Today we're going to play with um, wet and wet techniques with watercolor. We're going to be washing in color, removing color, you know, putting a color on top of dried watercolor. This is just a fun technique to do. Um, very abstract, which I love, but also, you know, somewhat abstract because you're actually painting actual elements that you can actually identify. Um, let me know if you like this kind of style, abstract, semi-abstract kind of you know, painting. I have, I have a lot of fun with this. I think it's any skill level can do this and have, you know, depending on what you like to do, create something really intricate or not. Also, I'd uh, love you to check out my Patreon. I have ad free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream in the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate. So let's grab our paint and a paper and our watercolor and experiment with this wet and white technique. It's a lot of fun, you know, just something to get you out of your comfort zone. So let's get started. All right, friends, for this tutorial, I'm going to go over supplies. I have a piece of Arches, 100% cotton, whole press paper. It's like a seven by 10 inch piece. You can just use whatever size you like, paper towels. I'll be using a couple of brushes, a big old floppy kind of uh, brush to wash in some color, Neptune 6 Princeton. Uh, I'll probably be using my Princeton 8 long round for detailed work. All right, if I find it, there we go. Um, you know, whatever you have is convenient. You can use even these kind of brushes. I have a Princeton 10 and 12 Neptune series. The sea sponge, which we'll talk about in a second. A water and paints. So I have this plastic uh, portable palette here. Um, it's like a palette you could take with you out and do some plein air painting. But um, it's just the top of it. So I'm using this, or you can use a laminated piece of wood, whatever you have that would be like laminated. So you don't want something that's not laminated so that it's going to stick to it. Right. And then you might want to have like, I'm just using the, the paint container I have here, just lift it up a little bit. So you just put something underneath it. So it lifts up like two to three inches. Right. So I have the tutorial I've talked about, I've done this before, like a big, great trick for wet on wet to keep it wet longer is you're wetting both sides, right? I use a sea sponge. You can use a brush if you don't have a sea sponge. So I'm going to wet the back. All right. And why you want it on laminate is because it will stick nice to it. And if you leave it until it's completely dry, it will dry flat. Another bonus. So you don't have to tape it down. I'm just going to get this all nice in here. You can feel it stick right to it when you put it down. And then you're going to do the other side. Now I've already pre-mixed colors that are fall co colors, like browns and oranges and golden yellows. So you don't need me to show you how to do that, right? You have your colors all here and this is where you're just going to play. You take a big old floppy brush, grab some water, and we're going to just take some oranges. I'll mix up some more orange here, all right? We're just going to put some color in here, grab some more water, moving this around. And if you want to lift it up, hold it up in like an even higher angle. Add more water. It's going to dip around. Going to add some yellow. Woohoo! Just play around with the color where it goes. Take some browns. I have this burnt umber. You know, wash that in. Add some more water to it. See where it flows. Move it this way, that way. Even darker browns. I've added some um, some gray in there. Just you're just playing with the color, mixing it. Try not to get it too crazy where, you know, you don't have any space for some nice light color. I put some nice light green in here. It's like chartreuse kind of green. Go back and add some browns. You can make a little bit darker green too if you want to. I'm gonna make some darker green with Prussian blue and some yellow. And play around with that. Right? Just adding some of that in. Still very, very damp. I'm gonna get some more browns in here. And some oranges again. Right? You can add some more red, like cranberry tones. But you can wait till later. I'll show you in the tutorial what you wanna add the red later. We're gonna do that. I'm gonna go back in here and put some yellow in here. So we're just kind of filling in this wet on wet, playing with color that are autumn colors. Right? There's no rhyme and reason to it. There's, this is where your, your creativity kind of comes in, where you're going to place the dark colors, the light colors. This is all you having fun. 
See, I'm just gonna go, you can go and just splatter in some color, get a little creative. It's gonna bleed. You know, all this fun stuff. What's great about this wet on wet, it just stays wet for a while, <laughs> which we like. And I'll show you why. I'm gonna add some orange, put some brown in here mixed in. So the, I have this color called burnt sienna. Fantastic color, it's perfect for fall. But just, and I can just tap that in too. Oh, so much fun. Seriously, there's no wrong way to do this. Zero. You can't screw this up. Um, this is for any skill level and this is like fun. You can do it with your kids or your grandkids. They love to splatter, I'm sure. <laughs> so do I, <laughs> obviously. And like I said, you move it like this. You can move it up this way, down this way. You can move your, grab some more yellow. Ooh, play around with the color, right? Just have some fun. I'm playing around with more yellow in here. So we've got some real deep fall colors going in here. Now in some areas you might want to have a little bit darker. I'm going to go back in with my brown and this gray, mix them together. I want to get some deep tones in some areas up here. There's some interest. You can't just keep it all like one note, right? Really kind of just get in there. It's very, very wet. But you see it's not buckling. Why? Because we wet the back. It's a beautiful trick. It's fantastic. It keeps it wet longer so you can play longer. Now there comes a point when you're like, okay, you're playing too much, you know, because sometimes that happens. I'm going to lift up some paint. So we're going to do another technique, lifting technique, right? Got this nice dark color going in here, kind of crazy. Going to add some more yellow and some green back in here. Uh, some yellow green. I'm playing around with doing that too. Just can't keep it all browns, right? Ooh, I just got some all over me. So, <laughs> you can use the Princeton 8 Long Round, uh, or even a bigger brush if you have one. So now that I'm done with my putting it on an angle, I can put it down flat. I can take my paper towel, kind of wipe up some of this excess around here there we go still lying flat I'm sorry about the glare but that's what happens with the ring so I'm grabbing my paper towels so a couple of techniques to play around with here this uh, technique where we remove paint right and by the way if you wanted to splatter some like white acrylic ink or gouache let's try that it's kind of fun or even gold. I have gold somewhere. Oh, let's do the gold. The gold might be gone now. Oh yeah, it's all dried up. You can use gold, watercolor, or gouache. But we seem to do this technique many times. We splatter in the gouache. Don't use your f great brushes for this, by the way. Acrylic ink or white gouache. It kind of just separates on the. Creates a kind of cool atmosphere kind of look. Don't do it everywhere. I just did it there. Boom, done. So, make leaves or flowers, branches. This is the removal technique. Now you have to kind of time it in a certain way. It should be damp, kind of wet. And if it, when you remove it and it shows like it fills right back in, it's too wet still. So take a dry brush, you lift it like a mop, tap it back on the paper towel, clean it off. See if it's going right back in it. See, I'm just lifting the paint, tapping it back. See how it keeps folding back in? It's super wet in there. So you're going to have to wait a little bit longer to lift up this paint. Right? Also, um, take a twig, a branch, a credit card. I'm going to find my little nib here somewhere. It's hiding. Oh, maybe I'll just use my old paintbrush. You can make little scrapes. like branches 
We're going to get super creative today, guys. And you'll see those lines. They'll fill in with the paint, right? So you see it's kind of really kind of folding right back in here. Going to have to let it dry a few more minutes. And then we do this technique where we clean up our brush and we kind of lift the paint. See how I'm lifting the paint and tapping it back on the paper towel. It's so wet, it's not going to let me have an actual um, shape. So we're going to have to let it get damp and then we can come back and remove some of this color and play around with it. Also guys, while it's kind of drying, if you want to try like the bokeh look, you take like a nice little bit, of, you know, crafty kind of mixed media brush, nothing. Don't use your good watercolor brushes for this. You can kind of remove the paint the same way. See, grab a little water, clean it off, remove, doing like a circular motion. We've got this really kind of cool circle. It's kind of similar to what the white paint can do. Just kind of move. You could also take your paper towel, right? Scrunch it up. And look at this. Boop, boop. <laughs> remove some paint. That's how really wet in there, right? Just go like that. Play around with doing it in certain areas, not everywhere. It has that kind of ooh, atmospheric bokeh. Make them a little bit bigger, some other ones smaller. Should be in a circle. So I'm just tapping the circular scrunchy kind of thing that I did with my paper towel. And it also helps test this paper if it's going to come up with my paintbrush. So let's play around with it again. You're going to remove it in a shape like a flower. There it goes. Lift and tap. Clean off your brush. Lift. Clean off your brush. See? It's like mopping up the the color. And I did this with different colors than the one I did. Just keep mopping it. Creates such a cool look. Now, they don't have to be flowers. They could be leaves. Because after all, it's kind of fall, right? But I thought I'd do a combination of both. And it has that really kind of atmospheric kind of funky, abstract look to it, right? I just kind of slowly do that. Now, or you can do a leaf. So you know what a leaf shape looks like. Just keep taking it and moving it. You could play around with using the paper towel too. Removing it for like a leaf shape. Just take your time with this. It takes a while. You can go crazy removing a lot. Or doing a little bit of, you know, just a little bit. See, I'm kind of making like a little branch here. This is a blast. Kind of very therapeutic too, by the way. Just removing with the paintbrush. It takes a little time because you're constantly cleaning your brush, mopping, cleaning, brush, mopping. See, I'm, when I remove my hand up here, I've dipped it in the water, I've tapped in the paper towel, and then I've, ripped, I've gone back and mopped it up again. See, and you're getting these cool leaves. Like I said, you can take the paper towel, scrunch it up, you could do a nice big circle here and maybe add a flower or something. Painted later, right? You can try and scrunch it and see if you can scrunch it to like a leaf shape. Let's see what happens. Let's try this. It's kind of pointy, kind of pushed down. 
and you have to get the tip. So the tip, you have to grab your paintbrush to get that pointy tip. You see, you've got a bigger base to lift up, though. It's much easier. Isn't that cool? Still kind of really still damp. <laughs> when I say that technique really stays for a long time, I am not kidding. And up here, I might just do like little, because I made these branches in here when I scraped it. Almost like little balls. Kind of like twiggy ball, like cotton. It's kind of cool. Do all these things. So, you're going to keep doing this until you feel that, mm, I like it, I don't like it. If you want to remove a bigger chunk for a bigger leaf. See, I'm getting that damp. And I'm lifting, doing that whole lifting movement. Look at that, that's a bigger leaf. Right? Much bigger leaf. You can do it in the shape of a maple leaf. But of a, you know, there's all different types of leaves. It's up to you. Might do another one out here, a bigger one. Again. So we're going to keep doing this until you feel satisfied. We're going to let it dry after you feel satisfied that you removed all the areas that you want to remove. And then we're going to go back in and do some painting. And that's basically a layering technique. Many techniques here. Wet on wet, right? Removing, lifting paint. And then adding paint again. Lots of things to do with wet on wet. I'm seeing I'm going to keep playing with removing some of this paint. I'm kind of really loving it. All right, so do whatever you feel you want to keep doing. You don't have to follow everything I'm doing. Now that I've given you the tools for this, you play around exactly how you want to do it. Do it with leaves, flowers, daisies, whatnot. And then we'll come back and we'll do some layering. All right, guys, once everything is dry, then we can go back in and we can play around with all kinds of leaves and twigs. So remember we had those, you know, those lines. You can actually fill those lines in with darker brown, right? You can water it down too and add brown leaves. See, it's a bunch of layering technique. Simple leaves. And you can make leaves like this. You just push down and pull back up that technique. Make it a little bit lighter or darker. Um, for my little flower here, I can make the center darker. Highlight that. You know, all kinds of like doodads and dots. We take the yellow, make it a mustard yellow. You know what happens when you go yellow over a different color? It changes the color. See, you play around with that. Make some yellow leaves here. Take the orange, nice bright orange. I'm playing around here. So then again, you like you're just overlapping and adding some branches, twiggy kind of looking things, leaves. You're just playing around, you know, with the whole entire look. To the areas that you took apart this part. Maybe you want to go in and add like a little vein, right? Just a little yellow vein here and here. Veins, I'm sorry, veins, not one vein. Um, you could do open kind of dark flowers. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to water down some like deep brown, black. So you take your brush, you make a little circle here, and you just make little daisies. Oop, that was a yellow. That, see, nice little bleed. I love the little happy accidents that happen sometimes. You know, go around that circle that was white and do the same thing here. Right? You can add brown ones, yellow ones, orange ones. It's a lot of fun to play. You can make them a little bit lighter. See, this one's a little bit duller in color. And you can add a dark center. 
all these things. Simple leaves in the darker color tones. Kind of play around with that. Twiggy kind of twigs, berries. This is something that you can get really creative with. See, I'm adding all these kind of funky leaves. There's no right or wrong to this. It's the most creative thing when you're doing kind of like abstract stuff. So I might add another leaf in here. And this is where we'll layer it. We'll go right over top of like our even just a nice new white one. Right over here. We can add some deeper tones. Just go on top of each other here by a little bit here, a little bit there. See? Go over here. We're going to water down some browns. Make some leaves kind of coming here, branches. You can add some berries, like I said, twigs. So many things you could do. Just these little doodads. Think of the fall, there's all these kind of funky branches and leaves, acorns. You know, all these little fun things. Just simple. Here, I'm going to take a green color here. I'm going to add some brown to it. So, nice deep dark green. I'm going to water it down. And just mm, funky little leaves, you know? They can be coming from anywhere. And you can make some green ones up here. Get really creative, guys. This is such a great, fun thing to do. Very therapeutic. <laughs> I'm going to add some more little doodad stems out this way, G greenery, whatnot. There's, like I said, there's no right or wrong with this. This is just lots of fun. And so I would grab some like gold paint or gold, um, I don't know if yellow ochre here. I thought I'd grab the gold. <laughs> I have to find, here's my gold. <laughs> gold paint with the all these so pretty this is the gold watercolor from Holbein grab my brush just a little bit of water so it's almost opaque I don't want to use a lot and you can kind of put it in your center of this dot you can just make little dots where the dark areas are because it will show up more you can go on the outer edge of some leaves and it dried some of these are still wet, but there's so many different things you can do with the gold. It's so much fun. Again, you can make gold flowers like we did with these other black linear flowers. I'm getting paint all over me. <laughs> anyway, I would like you to just play around with the gold. Um, it's kind of fun to add just like even just circles. The more opaque less water you use the more you'll see it somehow my gold is not working the way it wants to you can um like i said outline some of the foliage that you have and some of the flowers just play around guys it's all you need to do is just play 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 that's the most important thing to do see i'm gonna put this i can use the gold as the vein in my leaves I could make gold leaves, gold twigs, gold berries, gold everything. <laughs> play, play, play. So that's it. This is all you do. You just keep playing, adding, subtracting. Well, you, you subtract it already. You just go back and add and play around with all the things. I might add little dots around this flower getting some patterns. If you're one of the people like myself who loves to play with pattern, do it. Put little patterns around each little flower, do little dots, dashes, all that fun stuff. That's what makes your design unique and only yours. You know? And sometimes people get, when do I stop? Well, if you feel like right now, see, mine's kind of full, got a lot of stuff going on. Step back for a while and then come back to it and then see if you feel like it's done. Right? 
you have to step back for a while. Sometimes you're too much into it and then you forget, mm, I overdid it. I didn't want to put something there. It's always good to kind of step back. It helps. So that's that, guys. I hope you guys enjoy this. Give my video a like, please. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And yeah, hit the bell notification button if you haven't already, because you know my tutorials are not always up on a certain time, certain day, and sometimes I'm like, I think I'd like to fake you guys out. <laughs> all right, guys, I really appreciate all of you. I'm so glad you came to my channel, and I hope you're having fun with painting, watercolor, techniques that I'm showing you, because that's what it's all about. It's really just about being creative and having fun, not getting so serious. Yes, you have to follow some rules to some extent for things to go a certain way with like wet on wet, you know. But other than that, it's just it's all about creating and having fun. So again, happy painting. Do whatever it takes to create something really fun like this. Just painting, adding, subtracting, all that good stuff. All right, guys, take care. And I'll speak to you soon.